welcome to another episode of Too Weird Didn't Watch, the show where we make fun of movies that we have not seen based on nothing but their weird descriptions. Yes. Yes. I'm Brantley. And I am Albert. Brantley is going to read our movie descriptions for us today. Brantley, what do you got? All right. Well, I don't know if it's going to be this time when we release this because we were delayed recording for a little bit. Is it Halloween stuff? Yes. Well, it just hit me with it. Okay. First up, we had Mad Monster Party. Okay. From 1967, made by Rankin Bass. Oh. Okay. <laughs> was that an excited or a... No, I was, I was like trying to fit... Like, Mad Monster Party, it has a playful tone to it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, is this, like, misguided? Is, like, is it an actual... Excuse me. Is it an actual party? Now that I know that it's Rankin Bass, I get it. Yeah. I can... Essentially, see them like it'll be scary, but not. It's not supposed to be scary. It's scary in the wrong way. <laughs> you have scary nightmares. like that little elf is terrifying in the uh, Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. Right, right, right. He ripped out of Yeti's teeth, man. <laughs> All right. And so the movie begins with Baron von Frankenstein, voiced by Boris Karloff. Good call. Creator of the monster and his mate, not his wife, his mate. So don't assume gender. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you were just saying they were living in sin. It's the 60s. I don't judge, man. <laughs> that, that was... She's on the love pill. Love would you love me. They're off, like, protesting the war and stuff. <laughs> I want to see that movie. <laughs> Frankenstein and... And... What? In Vietnam? Like, protesting Vietnam. Just like... Oh. Life is all good. And then Drake is, like, pro-war, because then there's bodies, and he's just like, free drinks. Okay. <laughs> okay. I want to keep talking about that. Let's stay on topic okay. with the monster party thing. Anyways, he made the monster and his mate. He's created a vial of potion capable of destroying matter. That's actually big if true. Yeah. Delighted by his latest success, the Baron decides to retire while he's still on top. And might <laughs> sneer. <laughs> That's I made how it. scientists think of Watson and Crick. They got to that DNA thing and they're like, well, let's... I mean, I don't know what the, what else they did, so I guess maybe they did do that. <laughs> I mean, he created life and then a way to destroy all matter, so he's just like, yeah, no, I made it. I'm basically God, whatever. That sure is that a guy? All, he could destroy with oxygen. <laughs> I've got all matter. <laughs> he retires and invites nearly a dozen monsters to the Isle of Evil for a party. I love evil. Isle of Evil. <sighs> okay. There, at the party. That's actually a description, I don't know why. <laughs> He intends to retire as head of the worldwide organization of monsters and hand over the position and the secret of destruction to his nephew, the nerdy Felix Flanken. Wait, why does he get to be the head of the organization? He's not a monster. But he made one. But what did his nephew do? This seems nepotism. kind of racist. Not really racist, but nepotism. It's like if the head of it, the NAACP was an Asian dude. Yeah. Or you'd be like, I mean, nothing against him, yeah, but that's sort of the point. in these situations, Dracula's head monster. Right, or that. Yeah, that's normally it doesn't how have works. to be Frankenstein's monster specifically, but the fact that it's just some guy who made a monster. <laughs> I mean, you would think if you have an organization of monsters, they wouldn't be cool with the people who are, you know, trying to be their overlords. Yeah. Attending the party are the monster and his mate, Dracula, the werewolf, not the wolf man, because not universal. The Hunchback of Notre Dame, The Invisible Man, The Creature, presumably the of the Lagoon. Rune, yeah. <laughs> Dr. Jekyll and his alter ego. <laughs> it's a plus one. <laughs> Spoilers! <laughs> and The Mummy. Uh, the Mummy, not, you know, you know which one. Yeah. Toon Common. Mm. It's a 14-year-old boy running around the party. <laughs> oh, it's not, uh, it's not Pazuzu? No. Also present are the Baron's assistant, the attractive redhead Francesca, and the zombie butler, Yetch. Wait, 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 the zombie doesn't get to be in the the organization? No, he's, he's a butler. Okay. He's not being monstrous, he just works for the head of it. Uh, well, so okay, that weird, like, are, hey, here's the question I have. He's If there's only one of him, mm-hmm. and he's a zombie, mm-hmm. we have to assume this is a, like legit Haitian slave voodoo zombie. Yes. Which... When did uh, Dawn of the It's Dead? right around here at okay. that time. It would have been close enough where they might not have seen it. I mean, they also don't call them zombies in that movie, so... 
Well, that, fair enough, yeah. Like on ghouls. Just What year did it say? I'll, I'll look it up. What year did this come out? 1967. Okay. 1968. Oh, so Maybe they were nice. inspired uh, by Rankin and Bass. The true origin of <laughs> zombies as we know them. <sighs> Not invited to the party is a monster the Baron only identifies as it. Who... And the climax is revealed to be King Kong. <laughs> kind of hard to invite him to a party. Yeah. What? Okay, so this is like the bumble of their Christmas special. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They took like, that. Bigger. Well, I was going to say they took him and painted him brown. Probably, yeah. And repurposed the puppet. <laughs> Needless to say, the, when the monsters find out that the Baron is handing over his secrets to his nephew instead of one of them, they are outraged. Hilarity and chaos ensue. I was outraged before, like, that the, the doctor was even the one in charge. So I I, I was going to take issue with the needless to say, but that was our first criticism yeah. of the movie. <laughs> so it actually was needless to say. Yeah, no, accurate. <laughs> Fair enough. And that's all we have for Mad Monster Party. Okay. They are mad. Mm-hmm. There's a party. And many of them are monsters of some kind or another. Yep. Next up we have House of the Wolfman. From 2009, <gasps> which is not one of the Universal House, House of, of X, yeah. right? Yeah, um, they made Dracula and Frankenstein, um, which were both you know the first two Monster Mash movies. Is this? I you, I know you have not seen it, mm-hmm. but is this in the style of those movies? Are they yes, shooting in much. black and white? I don't think it's in black and white. Do they have they tried to make you think that they shot on film by adding scratches digitally afterwards and after effects by clicking that plug in one time and rendering the whole movie with them? Possibly. Okay. So Dr. Baylor Reinhardt, who is played by Ron Chaney, grandson of Lon Chaney Jr. Okay. Is a man. I was dog. worried it was like a really bad Lon Chaney impersonator. <laughs> possibly for adult film purposes, and I'm glad that it's the real guy. So, fun fact that has nothing to do with any of the movies we're covering. Lon Chaney Jr. is not actually his real name. It's something else Chaney. It's just they made him change his name for the name recognition because his dad was famous for the silent era. Which is right, a fun yeah. fact that I felt like sharing. Anyways. I think I've met Don... Or Ron. Ron Chaney. I think I... Well, I was in the same room with him <laughs> at the... You breathe the same air. The, uh, I was a Mile a High Horror Film life. Festival many several years ago. I went to that, and he was a guest there. Okay, cool. Was... I didn't have anything to say to him. I was like, that dude is related to another dude that was in a movie one time. <laughs> I don't care. That's probably technically true for everyone on the planet. Yes. I mean, he's to directly related. Degrees, yes. Anyways, he, play, he is a mad doctor who has invited five people to his castle to determine which of them shall inherit his, his estate. Okay, so, and then he ends up dead, right? He has arranged for a competition of sorts. The winner will be chosen by process of ellipses. Elimination. Oh, it's like the most dangerous game? Maybe. The vis- visitors they killing each other? The visitors quickly realize they've made a terrible mistake in accepting Reinhardt's in- invitation but are trapped like rats in a cage under the watchful eye of Ron Hart's ghoulish manservant, Barlow. Barlow's a good name for a manservant. It's a good name. If I ever get a manservant, I'll, na- I'll, I'll make sure his name Barlow. Make sure you <laughs> make him change his name. Legally, it's in the contract. <laughs> his real name is Lon Chaney Jr. <laughs> <laughs> Lon Chaney the fifth? They soon discover the castle's full of terrifying monsters such as the Wolfman, Frankenstein's monster, and Dracula. How do you keep Dracula just yeah, what? low-key? Uh, this is... Wolfman, you know, that's a dude who turns into a werewolf that you have living at your and house. And Frankenstein's monster is, like, uh, essentially a... Well, in, in all the of these, story, he's, he's intelligent, but right. in the movies, he's just... Even though in the second movie, he learns how to talk, and then he's like, we deserve to be dead, and kills everybody. Is this another comedy, do you think? No, this one, from what I've read, plays itself seriously, like like one of those older movies. So it's probably got some campiness to it. I think they tried to get that. Yeah. But they tried to take it seriously. I don't know how you do, like... I'm not saying you can't do it, but I, I don't know what the proper way to do campiness intentionally is. Like, t- can it? you can you hire people who are not good actors, but are really going for it on purpose? Is that like, a, I, you go to your casting director, and he's like, I thought got somebody who's really great for the part, and you're like, no. 
I want someone who's not right for the part. So on, but they're trying so hard. <laughs> go to the mall and put up a sign. <laughs> yeah, that's all we have for House of Wolfman. Okay. I, I, what is your? I, I'm naturally suspicious of these throwback style movies mm -hmm. because they're always really cheap. Like the yeah. Despite the fact that movies were simpler back in the day, and the know, Dracula set was amazing. Like there like was the a lot underground of it, crypt part. The the crypt of it, but even like basically, what's hilarious about the uh, the first one? You know that great entry scene where you see like the and you know Dracula's at the top of the stairs and he says, "I bid you welcome." I think so. Okay. I was not super impressed with Dracula, so it, it did not much of it did not stick so in my mind. That first scene, he's in this giant like entry room. Mm -hmm. Basically, the stairs and stuff on the ground is real. The rest of it's a painting. <laughs> yeah, they have matte paintings. I know, but they were like really good. And it, because of the film grain, you also couldn't tell as much. Right, right. Whereas now, if you try to pull it out, it's like no, that's that's not there. It's the same thing you get now with high frame rate. We're not like so one of the. Uh, criticisms I've seen now of Gemini Man. I haven't seen the movie. Yeah. Uh, but I've heard it's really tough to make, to use all of the tricks that you would normally use with high frame rate because w when you get that much clarity, all of a sudden you're looking at people and you're like, that person is wearing makeup on their face. Yeah. That person pretended to punch that other person. Like you don't, the veneer of film is removed. And I think that's if you're a fan of that you're like that's the point once you get it'll feel real but movies aren't real no you're not i don't want it i don't want my movies to feel real <laughs> i want them to be a movie but so that, that maybe i'm an old codger but <laughs> if they were if they actually if one of these movies actually goes and uses i don't want to I'm not even gonna say period accurate like you don't have to go to an antique shop and dig up the exact camera but if you're actually using you know, 16 millimeter black and white film, um, and those kind of techniques. I don't even know if they had 16 millimeter. I don't know what exactly the film setup was. But if you're using techniques of the era, that's fine. My impression of a lot of these has been they just shot on digital, and they're not they're not that good. Yeah. What's next, Brentley? Okay. What's next? We have Monster Mash. Which uh, we have noticed the theme of this episode is Monster Mash movies. I've yeah, I've, I picked up yeah. on that. Is it? Do you think the song appears in this, or do you think the song is based on this? The song does not appear in this one. This movie came out in two thousand seven, so it's not based on this either. Okay. This is an animated movie. The so wait, it came out in two thousand and seven. It's called Monster Mash, and 2000. they did. Oh, I said, and it's animated. Oh, okay. Even so, Monster Mash was out in two thousand, right? Yeah. Why would you not? Include the song Monster Mash in the Monster Mash. This is a very low budget movie. Oh, okay. Fair <laughs> enough. Anyways, Drac, Frank, and Wolf. Now, mm. who are these people? Um, uh, they, I don't, they don't ring a bell with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not Howler, so it's not the Drac Pack. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Anyways, they were the scariest monsters around. That's how they became associated with fun. You know, campiness, like we were just talking about. It's animated, though, so... yeah. We were in the movies! There was some was work, quote-unquote, put in? Yeah. Awful Dracula accent I just did. Anyways. They end up summoned by the Superior Court of Horrors. What? <laughs> where the judge orders them to prove that they are still scary by the end of 24 hours, or they will be sentenced to an eternity entertaining at children's parties. Oh, man. They're not scary no more, man. This is actually way too real. <laughs> this is like the plot of Jurassic World. Yeah. Where they're like, the dinosaurs aren't enough, we need something <laughs> else. So Is this a postmodern? I mean, the fact like, that they're going by Drac and Frank and Wolf and not the well, Wolfman, Dracula. I guess that's part of the point. Is, is they, this they, movie smart, Brantley? It might be. Um, we'll find out in the second half of this description. <laughs> okay. So Drac, Frank, and Wolf are assigned to scare the Tinklemeister family. Uh, it doesn't seem that smart. Yeah. The Tinklemeister soon end, ends up assisting Drac, Frank, and Wolf into proving that they are still scary even when the Grim Reaper pros prosecutor sends, They're not, though. Sends, Obviously. Anyways, so he sends three new monsters consisting of Freddy D. Spaghetti, mm. King of Carbohydrates, 
a humanoid spaghetti monster based on Freddy Krueger and Jason Voorhees. Chicky, the doll of destruction, I wind up doll based on Chucky. And the alienator from Alien to make sure that they fail. So he sends modern monster right. movie well, I monsters. Love the, okay, so here's what I like. I, I thought that this was going to be more of this. The the uh, what what was the first guy's name? Drac? No, 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 no. The the one that he sends, the spaghetti monster. Oh, Freddy D Spaghetti. Freddy D Spaghetti. Despite the fact that it's horrific, like it's not funny. No. Really. I mean, it's trying to be funny, but it doesn't seem that funny to me. But despite that, like, especially when the point the is I, like these are the scary monsters. Well, though, but there is that sense of people being like, oh, we're getting like you know the fear of not being you know pretty enough anymore fear you know, fear carbohydrates because i mean I've, I've avoided getting carbohydrates today because i'm like trying to lose that weight i'm gonna get under 200 it's gonna be awesome um and that's legitimately what the zeitgeist is of america today the other ones don't really fit in with that it's just people are afraid of dolls because they're creepy mm-hmm. um, and then alien because people don't like foreigners in america i thought it was just because of the alien it is aliens yes. but sure <laughs> I don't think that was as... Well, I'm trying to think if that was as much of a thing in 2000. There, I remember there being big debates about immigration during the George Bush era. People talking that about... That more happened after 9-11. Right. I was probably kind of always there, but I was, you know, a child, so I didn't really care. It was all white child in the South, so... It has been, it has been sort of an ongoing, like, how much should we allow, you know, they opened up... Like, way back in the 60s, they opened it up more uh, so workers could come across because... It's insanely difficult to work in cotton fields, apparently, mm-hmm. and some other stuff. And nobody wants to pay, you know, fifty dollars an hour because that's what it seems to be worth. So, we're like, get some poor people; <laughs> yeah. they're desperate. All right, you ready for a final movie? Commentary. Yeah, go for it. All right, our final movie is Monster Mash: The Movie! Exclamation point. But not from 1995, so predating the other Monster Mash by five years. Does this one contain the song "The Monster Mash"? Yes. <laughs> Is it based on the movie The Monster Mash? Kind of. <laughs> okay. Is I, it animated? No, this one's live action. <gasps> what? How have I not heard of this? I don't, because it's from 1995. I've heard of, well, I was, I was 10 years old in 1995. I was hearing about everything. Look, just because you were perusing the shelves at Movie Gallery didn't mean you would find every movie. Fair. Okay. Whatever. Anyways, a teenage couple, Mary and Scott, are on their way home from a Halloween party when car trouble prompts them to seek help at the old mansion of Dr. Frankenstein. Is this one of those movies where they, they are like, Dr. Frankenstein, and that just nobody comments on the fact that that's a character from a book? Because sort of like in zombie movies where nobody's ever heard of a zombie? Maybe the book doesn't exist in this universe. Yeah, well, that's what I'm asking. Yeah. Pro- let's go with that. They okay. might say, like, that's a weird name. Spooky. Once inside, they meet a host of strange characters at whose mercy Scott and Mary suddenly find themselves when Frankenstein informs them, I'm sorry, the bridge is out. You'll have to spend the night. Exclamation point. Right. <laughs> Each character has his or her own secret designs on Mary and Scott. I'm starting to get a little uh, Rocky Horror in here. I was wondering. Yeah, I was like, what, what, what designs? Because if if you use that term at, for like he had designs on her, it's almost always like he wanted to get with her. Yeah. In some way or another. And it is a his or her, and then for both of them. Right. Frankenstein wants to take Scott's brain and put it in his latest creation. Because I guess he's tired of gray rubbing now. He's getting old. Well, it's fresher, too. Yeah. I don't know what... Like, it'll just be Scott, though. i will just be mad and then, like, super strong also. Nah. That's not how that works in these movies. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Frankenstein's assistant, Igor, develops feelings for Mary, especially after she encourages him to be confident and play your hunch. Which, I guess, own it? Uh, there's a similar plot line in Toy Story 4. Where, have you seen Toy Story? There's Woody tells Buzz about his inner voice. He's like, oh, I listen to my inner voice. And Buzz is like, inner voice? What? And then like he starts pushing his buttons and his mm-hmm. bus, like his own buttons tell Buzz him things. to the rescue. Right. And so he like, he starts taking advice from them. And at a certain point, the buttons are like, run away, let's go. And he's like, eh, no. <laughs> and, he, and, and then like he learns about the real inner voice. Mm-hmm. That's like the thing inside of you that, you know, knows what should be done and is not. Like an actual electronic Jiminy voice. Jiminy Cricket. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> Disney. Great movie, by the way. T- Toy Story 4. 
thing that once Scott's brain has been removed, Igor's own brain can replace it. He's going to put his brain... Igor's going to put his brain in Scott's body. Which after Scott's will brain is in still be the thing. same person. Yes, because the villain. Which is actually kind of the plot to one of the Wolfman movies. Sort of. The first one where he meets Frankenstein. Uh, his hunchback... David? Or Henry? I can't remember which. The doctor played by Boris Collar promised to put his brain inside Larry Talbot's body. He's okay. put Larry Talbot's brain inside the monster. Which I guess would be like a Wolfman monster, which I really want to see, but never going to happen. They won't give me what I want. Anyways, Count Dracula and his wife, Countess Natasha, who are a pair of vampires, that apparently you need to be informed, decide to spice up their lifeless marriage by feasting <laughs> on Mary. <laughs> oh, what? By I feasting don't... on Mary and Scott, respectively. They're going to mix it up a little. Okay. Wait, when you say respectively, so... Dracula he... gets Mary. Right. And and, Ke- and Natasha gets Scott. And by feasting on, you mean literally eating the flesh of them and consuming it into their bodies and not, in fact, enjoying them in sort of open marriage type ways. They're vampires. They don't eat meat. Oh, drink right. Dry. Okay. And it, as vampires, that process also involves Six seduction. Attacks. But never okay. like full sixty times, right? right it's just sort really of the implied sixty times. Well, like the like the urge to mm-hmm. Wolfie, who is constantly struggling struggling with his like lycanthropy and worrying his mother, has to go into hiding to keep from devouring the newcomers. Finally, and I want you to prepare yourself because you're not ready. All right, I'm, I'm adjusting my posture. Gonna take a deep breath. All right, finally. Elvis Presley, <laughs> now a bandaged mummy, is planning a comeback to show business to show business and from the dead. With the help of his manager, Hathaway. Yeah, I wasn't prepared, you're yeah. right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but in order to fully restore the king to life, they need the blood of a virgin, and Mary just so happens to what? be one. What? They need virgin blood to bring him back no, to life. No, I know, but like for some reason the idea that like, it just seemed like she was definitely getting busy with Fred. Well, if they don't get to What's him... What's his name? Uh, Scott. Oh, Scott. Okay. Just the way they were presented was like, yeah, these two are, like, they've been together for a while. They've been, you know, they've been They're doing They're teenagers, all... man. Okay, I, I, not listening good enough, didn't pick up on that fact. It's the first three I'm... words, a teenage couple. I, yeah, it's been a while since you said <laughs> the first words. I just I didn't did not register for me that they were teenagers and even even so like teenagers in a movie apparently they oh, yeah, like nobody's a virgin unless it's like a plot point which it turned out to be it, it was in this one so their plot is they're gonna use her blood to do what uh well Hathaway who was the manager of Elvis Presley yeah mom, is gonna use her blood to bring him back to life and then he can go back on tour. And get them the money. Now, Meanwhile. I noticed... Wait a minute. I gotta point out. We noticed that they don't need Scott's blood. He's not a virgin. Apparently not. We've been over this. You've been Men outed. in movies, not virgins. If they are, they're losers. Does any... But does if a, the girl were not a, vir- a virgin, she would be a slut. And therefore, she would right. deserve to die. Yes. But as a virgin, she gets to live. We gotta find out if e- what what Igor's been up to. That's the, that's the ticket. Igor gotta... He's into her. Get it, get it going, man. <laughs> Save the day. Ugh. Uh. Anyways, <laughs> while Elvis and uh, Hathaway are trying to get that virgin blood, <laughs> uh, Wolfie, who is werewolf, named Wolfie, probably not his real name, they just call him that because they're, you know, uh, jerks. I sure hope it's not his given name. Yes. He's, uh, you know, he's just like, don't want to eat the people. Happens to be a full moon on the, you know, Halloween. Always happens. Uh, I'm going to go hide. And presumably he changes and just rampages back in the castle. And they're just like, Wolfie, stop it. Back in your room. Water bottle, squirt, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, and while that's happening, Dracula and Natasha, having, you know, they're having marital problems. Been, you know, a couple of centuries. Those crop up. It's like, we're going to spice things up. You eat the dude, you eat the lady. Which I would assume is what they've been doing anyway. Like, who have they been eating this whole time? Maybe Dracula's just doing dudes. Maybe. And she's is like, that the problem? And he's just like, you know, it doesn't do anything for me. She's like, well, maybe you should try the women. You said no when we got married. <laughs> like, yeah, I, clearly we need something, Drac. 
I don't, this I'm is very like uncomfortable lovely, delving further into this <laughs> awkward, like ten minute problem. conversation of them just arguing about their marital problems. Uh, and then, meanwhile, uh, Doctor Frankenstein wants to put Scott's brain in his latest creation, which is probably just a default stat, box scanner Frankenstein monster. Yeah, flathead neck bolts that aren't in the book, but whatever. And then Igor's just like, and then my brain goes in the other body, <laughs> and then me and the girl, we have sexy times. And then she. And then I was like, "No, wait, man." <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's terrible. Give me your Elvis impression. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> uh, I have to. Are we, are we about done? Hmm? All right. Well, I think that is it for this week. This is our very special Halloween episode of Two Weird Didn't Watch. Thank you guys so much for listening. If you like this, tell a friend about it. Uh, and we're out because I got to go rescue some people. All right, bye guys. Bye.